Hi everybody, Nick Smith here. Um, I've had a question from one of our users to, to ask me to try to explain the photometry, particularly to do with sports lighting. Um, but I'm, I'm going to touch on a little, a couple of the small issues that you may um, or may not come across as part of sports lighting design. Now, firstly, I would say um, sports lighting can be complicated, um, particularly if you're doing stadium lighting, um, and there's broadly two levels of, of lighting that you're looking at. The first one is your lighting for the players, um, what I would perhaps call recreational sport, and then you get larger event lighting where you're lighting for the television cameras. Um, and if you are not experienced in doing lighting design for sports lighting, please don't try and do stadium lighting. Give it, uh, get somebody involved who knows what they're doing. It's very, very easy to get it wrong. Um, so here endeth the lesson. Um, okay, so we're going to look at um, um, a couple of um, small projects. So I'm going to look at a small project and talk about a few of the um, the issues. Now, the the first thing to bear in mind is that. Um, all of the manufacturers um, who produce sports lighting product should be providing you with, with some kind of um, um, PDF download or, or better still, a, or a paper catalogue. This happens to be the Abacus one. Um, so if you want to go look at that, and this, we're looking, I'm looking specifically at asymmetric floodlights here. So, um, and what you will often see is, is curves like this, which are known as Cartesian curves. Um, and broadly speaking, there are two or three methods of displaying the photometry to see how it um, performs. Um, so these diagrams are obviously quite small, unless you've got a, a PDF viewer and you can zoom in and, and take a closer look at them. It's, um, it's, it's difficult to see um, what's going on but broadly speaking we, we generally have two distributions from a lantern um, the first one is is perpendicular to the to the column so if you drew a line from the column straight out into the pitch um, this is the distribution that you would get and what it is showing us is that we've got a peak distribution here at about well that's 50 degrees that's 60 that's 70 so probably about 58 degrees is, a, is the peak output of the fitting, which means if you mount that fitting horizontally, um, the distribution, this, this peak, this high level, will come out at, um, at 58 degrees. Now, if you go back to, to your to methodology with school um, and look at, um, at trigonometry, the, the higher the mounting height, the more that, um, that distribution will go across the pitch. Um, so, and in sports lighting, it's very common to use 12, sometimes 15 metre columns, 16 sometimes with rugby, um, and we can go up to 18, 20, 25. You can go pretty much as, as high as you want and um, obviously speak to um, the column manufacturer and see what they can actually um, provide to, to you. Um, so the blue distribution or this sort of blue-grey distribution is the, the, the distribution output um, perpendicular to the fitting um, and this uh, to the column sorry and this red distribution um, is the output that is um, is parallel so it's showing you the distribution left and right so this is where the lantern is and it's showing you what is going out both sides of, of the uh, of the particular fitting now if we go and look at um, a, a light source within within um, a, a software. I'm using Light in Reality because it, it shows it off really well. Um, the different methodologies, but here you can see um, we've got a slightly different distribution. And I'll explain why that is in a minute. Um, but um, this is the Cartesian curve, um, and this is the polar curve. Now, um, one of the things that you will find with um, with lantern manufacturers is that there is there is normally two ways to photometer the lantern. The first one is is that you mount the fitting horizontally. Um, if we look at um, this distribution here, 
um, and what this fitting has been um, photometered horizontally and as a result the blue distribution is showing you the the light coming out of the fitting which is here and we've drawn a section through the um, through the lantern and the distribution so this this part this is showing you that the output is coming out at probably about 50 uh, 60 maybe 50 degrees maybe 55 degrees perhaps um, and then the red distribution is showing you the output uh, left and right as if you were looking um, straight out from the fitting and looking at what's going left and right of the fitting so um, it gives you an indication of um, of, of what's going on now um, coming back to the the original photometry I was looking at um, which is um, is one of the abacus fittings um, abacus photometer their floodlights um, and they produce the data with the output at um, at the peak distribution of the fitting so um, what you would need to do is that if the if the output of the fitting was uh, say 55 degrees you would need to tip the fitting up to 55 degrees to effectively get that um, distribution um, horizontal so as if the fitting was mounted horizontally so there's a little bit of understanding between what's going on um, between how the manufacturers photometered it and um, and, uh, and and what's going on so I have to say this is um, not the exception uh, this is the exception rather than the rule the majority of, uh, of manufacturers will will photometer their floodlights um, horizontally as we've got here um, and um, here's another example this is the um, the Philips Optivision lantern so and that's exactly the same um, these are all met these are all metal halide floodlights so um, you can see um, how those distributions are so the blue distribution is showing you how far the the light will come out of the fitting when it's mounted horizontally in this case so in this case the peak distribution is at 60 degrees and you can you you do your trigonometry thing and, and work out um, how far that would be going across the court and, uh, or the pitch or whatever it happens to be so um, one of the other things that we I, I, we come across from time to time is um, is not that one. Which one was the one I was looking at? Is it C? Nope. Maybe it was E. Um, so this is um, a situation with a um, a floodlight that was actually part of a design that one of our users sent through. Um, and what I'm going to do is position that in the middle of the pitch. I've set up a calculation grid here. Um, incidentally, there's there's two or three ways that we can set up our calculation grids for uh, for sports lighting. Um, for um, the first thing you can do is to is to contact the. Um, the, the association so in the UK for example for football you might look at the football the FA's uh, website or Sport England and they have recommendations as to um, what calculation grids and levels and, and so on should be used um, I tend to use um, BS12193 because it's an independent standard um, it's a British standard um, and that gives you recommendations for how you should set the columns out. So for football, uh, it's telling you the the dimension of the of the playing area and and what the um, the the grid spacing should be uh, along the length and across the width. Now, um, I am I have always been of the opinion that the more calculation points you've got on an area. Um, I think this uses the um, the one two one nine three arrangement where I used uh, twenty one by fifteen points. Um, yes, I did. So um, the alternative to that is to use um, the FA use um, an eight by eleven grid, um, which. If I'm honest about it, I don't think there's enough points there. The, obviously, the more points you use, the more accurate the uniformity is going to be, and the better it will look for the um, to the users. So, um, something that's just worth worth considering whilst we're whilst we're talking about that. So, um, I'm going to position a column in the middle of the pitch, um, and I'm going to mount it at, at 15 meters. Um, now, as you can see with this distribution, the lantern is pointing to the right. Um, but the distribution is pointing straight down, and this is a very common issue we see with um, with asymmetric floodlights, 
uh, and particularly ones that have been converted between IES and ULM DAT format. Um, so there is um, issues with the specification of where the zero point is um, in the in the in the fitting. So um, when we look at the fitting in um, in plan view, um, we we tend to specify the zero point um, being straight up. Um, so um, it's at zero angles. So um, if you um, if you, when you're looking at it the, 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 now, there are some areas where the where the zero point is is at a different angle. Um, this is specific, especially true for for one of the American standards. Um, and if 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 the lantern has been photometered in a particular way, um, then you can quite often get this um, this rotation shift, um, so that you get some very unusual um, um, distributions out of the fitting. So. The first thing I do when I get some new photometry is I'll put one one lantern into a into a design area and I'll just position one of them and then look at where the light is coming out. Um, so, but we we um, in um, lighting reality we have there's a couple of ways that we can correct that within the program. So, obviously for um, for photometry that's um, included within um, the manufacturer's distributions, we we will take care of that for the suppliers. That's one of the things that we do look for for, for data that's part of the um, uh, subscription service that we provide. So, um, but what we can do is use this rotate eye table option at the top here. So, and we can rotate the fitting around. In this case, it's it's at ninety degrees. Um, but it's extremely common to have a minus 90 degree shift on the photometry, in which case you would use the 270 option. In this case, that's not the case. Not, not the, um... So um, what we can now do is we can now go and position that um, and um, save that, and then we can position other columns to, um, to light our area to, um, to whatever level it is that's, that's necessary. Um, 270 um, and so on and so forth so um, one of the things I would recommend is if you if you are looking at sports lighting is to take a look at the mirroring system uh, the symmetry system that we offer um, again anyone that does any sports lighting that tends to be the way that you will design it so you design it for a quarter of the pitch and then those are mirrored into the other four corners um, because obviously you would generally as a rule you would have the same arrangement in in all areas so um, I hope that has um, there's been useful um, and um, I've got a couple of things to um, to ask of you. Firstly, if you found the youth video useful today, um, please can you like the video below? Um, it helps me with my um, my rankings within YouTube. Um, if you have any comments or questions, add these to the um, to the questions area below. Um, or you can message me through the YouTube channel. You can tweet me nicksmith1246 um, or you can email me support at nicksmithassociates.com. Um, please subscribe to the channel for future updates. Um, so when I publish a new video, then you will automatically get a notification for that. And finally, if you have a topic you want me to cover, please message me through the channel. Tweet me nicksmith1246 through Twitter or you can email me, email me support at nicksmithassociates.com. Thank you very much for watching and I will hopefully see you again.